Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Tanya Love Show. I uh, hope you're all having a great day. I was just trying to pull up something right then um, that I'm going to read to you in a minute. I had a fabulous trip with my family recently, and we went to the forest for like a week up in Fort Warden, um, kind of up near Port Townsend area in Washington. And it was really beautiful. And it was really, it was really necessary for me to kind of retreat to the forest for a little while, and yeah. I'm going to kind of talk about some some things that maybe some of you can relate to, and how I think it's really important in my journey. It's been very important for isolation at times and just like complete solitude and getting away from all the world's busyness right. and stress and heaviness in the lower, you know, third dimension realms, and so. It was really a, a really necessary trip, and our family had a great time. We did a lot of hiking and took my dog, Honey Girl, biking with us and hiking, and it was it was awesome, and it was really nice to just be around a lot of crows. Like, we had crows waking us up every morning, and um, what else do we see? Crows, cranes, deer, all kinds of pretty wildlife around us, but it's nice to be home, and one thing that's awesome is last week, uh, and some of you, I'm sure, watching know that I'm in the Northwest, and in the Pacific Northwest, and basically the whole West Coast, it has been burning. Like, we have had a lot of fires, which is really unique for this area, because typically we have a lot more rainfall. And um, maybe, like, four or five days ago, I was really calling in for people to help hold an intention of the rain to come, because we need it here. And I'm happy to announce that the rain showed up the day before yesterday and it was just pouring rain in the evening and then we had some friends that were getting married yesterday and so I was like okay angels thank you for the rain but could you just kind of hold it back a little bit just over their wedding area until they get through their wedding and then you can bring it on again and it totally happened like that they were just like thank you for asking the angels for help because they were really concerned it was like a hundred percent chance it was supposed to rain during their wedding but we had a great time last night at their wedding, and so celebration and congratulations to Chris and Maureen, our friends. Um, so yeah, a lot of good things happening. And then to balance that good, there's been some challenges, and I'm, I'm not going to really talk about things in a way of like, just like my style. I'm not going to talk about problem very much, but I am going to focus a bit on like what's going on and then how... We each, when we're being challenged with something, how do we deal with that? How do we shift it? How do we, you know, move through people's energy fields that are not really holding a good vibration of love and good for us? And so I feel like there's a lot of um, courage required to live as an empowered empath and just an empowered being. If you've come to the planet Earth at this time and you know in your soul that you're here to be a light worker. You're here to ignite light and love, and you're here to embody love. There is going to be things that you most likely have gone through, initiations and challenges, where just to be you is a problem at times. And so, for example, let's say you are in an environment and you're just love and enthusiasm and hope and infinite possibilities in your energy, and people around you are in a fearful place and they're in a consciousness of poverty and you know problem and limitation just your very presence is going to trigger them to either shift into that higher vibration or they're going to want to get you away from them or get away from you and so it's been an interesting journey my entire existence of being on this planet my entire life um i have been challenged and i know i know myself i know who i am i am very self-aware and what's been interesting is when I was younger, I felt a need to be very quiet and shy and kind of hide and just stay away from people and just hold back my wisdom and not speak. Because when I would try to speak, I would get shamed or I would be judged or, 
yelled at, get in trouble for questioning authority. And so I can see, and I have a lot of compassion to why so many humans are afraid to come into their power. Because in essence, I don't really feel that from birth, in my journey anyways, it was encouraged. If anything, it was encouraged to shut the hell up and keep your, you keep your opinion to yourself. And if misalignment's happening, just turn away and just let it happen. And I know in my soul that my soul came here to challenge that because that's exactly how we're going to shift this planet. If we see that there is a lot of problems and it, it doesn't take too much intelligence to look out and see that the world has a lot of issues stemming from humans lack of integrity, from humans desire to overtake and their greed and their need for um, enslavement, their need for control and power, the need for more, like always a need for, I need more and more and more, never a sense of being satisfied. And so these are things that if any of us just observe our worlds, you're most likely seeing this around you in some form. So how do we have the courage to walk in our power? How do we have the courage to speak even when we're shamed, even when we're uh, isolated and ostracized from our community? And I say that because uh, sitting here on this show, as beautiful it is, as it is, and as much as I adore it and love helping, and my heart's intention is to help and to inspire alignment and to help those who have been suffering, that are ready to shift and that are ready for healing and wholeness, ready for a new way of living, that's who I'm here to talk to. That's who I'm here to connect with. But at the same time, there is some souls that, in my journey have observed me sitting here and lashed out and had negative energy towards me. Uh, I have had, you name it in my journey. I've been judged for the size of my breasts. I have been lashed out for who do you think you are to show your body? And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, this is my body. This is the form I have. And I feel I dress modestly. I feel like I dress very professionally and beautifully. But the reason I say that is, I have learned that it doesn't matter what we do. There are going to be humans that have opinions and that don't want to approve of us just for being who we are. And how do you have the courage to be who you are? And so I have great compassion for any of you that have in any way struggled with owning your power and any way struggled with speaking your truth in your families and your communities um, of just being who you are and not feeling ashamed about it. I feel as a woman, it has been amazing for me, the journey to hang out with women and to see how many women really don't want to feel good and celebrate with other women. How many women actually are looking for what's wrong with a woman and they want to kind of tear her down. And to me, that's what my heart's here to help heal. That's what my deepest intention is when I start women's circles and when I open up my sacred space in my home for workshops and things like that is to help us to heal these things. And what I've observed is that we have a choice, whether we're a wounded woman, a wounded child in the woman, or a wounded child in a man, or an empowered woman or an empowered man, we have to choose. We can't be a wounded little girl and an empowered woman at the same time. And so a lot of what I know my soul's here to help with is to help wounded girls and wounded boys heal those wounds and to reclaim their power, to realign with their divinity, and to move with greater power and greater presence and peace on this planet. And in order to do that, we have to do our work. And so there has been some people in my journey that when the, it gets time to do their work and they don't want to do their work, they don't want to hear the messages of their own need for alignment, suddenly I'm the enemy. And I say this to all of you listening because if there's any of you out there that you have a desire to make a difference in the world, you want to help others, you want to inspire others, this is part of what happens. I've talked to other healers that have gone through this. I, I see this happen to politicians. I see this happen to um, you know any public figure, you name it. Someone that's actually speaking out publicly and they're putting themselves out there, you're basically opening yourself up for target for some that are going to love you and then some that are going to hate you and they're going to lash out. And so one of the things that I, I think I recently saw something on Facebook that was like, I can't remember exactly how it was spoken, but basically if you want to live a life where you're never criticized, then say nothing, do nothing and be nothing. And I think a lot of us 
have been taught to be comfortable with that. Like the uncomfortably comfortable feeling of saying nothing, holding back our truth, being nothing. Okay, there's something I'd want to be, but no, I'll just stay back here and just play small. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, oh, I see that when that girl has her power and owns her power, she gets shamed. So I'll just be quiet and pretend I just go along with all the misaligned people. And that's a lot of the initiations we have to each pass, every one of us, if it's important to you to live a life of integrity, if it's important to you to live on a planet where there's honor, if it's important to you to live on a planet where there is equality and where there is respect, then these are all aspects that we have to cultivate within. And if any of us are not doing our work, then we are in essence being a part of the problem. And so... I had a discussion recently with, um, with someone who, you know, they were hearing through the grapevine gossip about, Oh, be careful of Tanya love. Like she's messing with darkness. And you know what? This shit has been happening since the beginning of the planet. Like you name it, look in history of how many times, uh, ex in, especially I've observed in history, a woman in her power speaking or doing healing work is often called a witch or, She's a pagan. Like we're, you know, we're basically going to be ostracized just because we dare have the right to to uh, claim our divinity and to actually embody our power. And so, I observe, you know, that there's women who see me speaking in my power, and then they see people gossiping and shaming me, trying to turn my clients against me. And what's sad to me is that humans are going to waste their energy doing this because I know myself and I know my integrity and I know my heart's intention, but I also observe that there are some souls that do not want to do their healing work. They do not want to shift out of poverty consciousness. So then now they have to shame me for the consciousness that I am actually nearing to them. And so if any of you are going through something like this, if any of you feel that you have had at times fear brought to you as far as being who you are, I totally salute you and I have such compassion for each of you. But I am here to say that I feel we have to have the courage to move beyond it regardless. And a big part of that is where it's kind of like we got to get in this, not that, not that we don't care about the world or we don't care about others, but it's like you got to almost get to this place where you're just like, fuck it. I don't really give a shit if people approve of me or if they don't approve of me. And it doesn't mean I don't feel it when people are hateful. It doesn't mean I don't feel it when poison arrows are sent and psychic attack is sent. Oh, I feel it. But it doesn't mean that that is going to affect me long. I may feel it and then have something to speak about it to help humans understand how hurtful that is. And I think of it like the, symbol the symbolicness of the West Coast right now we have all of these forest fires everywhere and they're just like taken off and the, you know, it doesn't take much. If you know much about fire, just light a spark and that spark ignites and it just starts to take off and it can create a lot of destruction very fast. This in essence is how I feel about humans that start to spread lies and rumors and gossip and say hateful things about people that they're actually intimidated by. And they're actually threatened by because they stand in their power and that energy of a spark of someone just saying, Ooh, you should be careful of that Tanya love. Like she might be messing with darkness. In essence, if you are doing this, you are part of a dark agenda And just in doing that, just in sparking that fire, you are igniting destruction. And I feel like each of us as humans, we need to own that shit. We need to start really realizing and recognizing how destructive we can be or how empowered and loving we can be. And I feel like if the same effect happens when if we express love and gratitude and appreciation and we're expressing our wisdom and our truth, which is what I spend doing on this show every week, that it ignites love. It ignites a fire of passion that moves quickly and it starts to move through the consciousness of humanity, inspiring shifts. But the same thing is happening when we're spreading darkness. And one of the things that came to me when I was meditating about it, because big picture, all of us listening at some level have probably been messed with by someone at some point in our journey or someone's mis, you know, led people about us or spread rumors, gossip, who knows? Something probably has happened at some level to each of us. But the thing is, is how do we deal with that? 
And when I was in meditating meditation, I was processing all of this. I realized that I can't control what 